Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Nargis Kasyanova, and I'm a senior fellow at the Debbie Center for Russian and Eurasian Studies. Very warm wel welcome to our virtual event, um, discussion on Kazakhstan's e-government and the currently negotiated partnership with Russian Sberbank. Kazakhstan has made major efforts to digitize its government and uh, they have been fairly successful. Last year, its e-government was ranked 29th in the world in the UN report. Now the government wants to transfer Kazakhstan's e-gov systems onto Russian Sberbank's new platform, Platform B. The memorandum along the lines was signed in September at, and it indicates a very tight timeline. It envisions that the agreement will be signed in the first quarter of 2022. The document mentions the possibility of further expansion of platform solutions to other countries in Central Asia, as well as to Mongolia and Turkey. It is a very serious decision, and today we want to discuss technical, economic, and political implications of this cooperation plan. We also aim to flesh out considerations that need to be taken into account by the governments in the region in their decision-making on e-government systems. And we have a great panel with us today and I will introduce them in the order that I'll be asking them to give initial remarks. First, I'll go to Anna Gusarova, who is director of the Central Asia Institute for Strategic Studies. And she has taught at the George Marshall European Center for Security Studies, the OAC Academy in Bishkek, and the German Kazakh University in Almaty. Her areas of research include counterterrorism, cybersecurity, cyber hygiene, strategic communication, information, environment, and irregular warfare research. And I also want to note uh, that we're grateful to Anna for contributing a chapter on digitalization in Kazakhstan for our report, uh, Digital Security. Um, Digital, digital Silk Road uh, in Central Asia present and future. And we are posting a link to this report in the chat. Uh, then I want to go to um, Yahya Tuleshev. We're very happy uh, to have with us uh, um, Yahya, who has over 15 years of experience working for international companies, managing and delivering IT solutions at global level. He has been one of the first certified project managers in Kazakhstan. And most of his experience comes from large scale projects at S&P 500 companies. After spending 15 years in UK, he has returned to Kazakhstan and continues to apply his knowledge and experience in digitalization of national financial systems. His key projects include transformation of corporate treasury systems, project, projects in GovTech, FinTech, and InsureTech. Then we will hear from Alek Shakira, who is a senior expert at the Center for Advanced Governance in Moscow. He is also consultant at Peer Center, Peer Center, where he focuses on international security uh, issues, including arms control, cybersecurity, and Russia-US relations. Welcome, Alek. Last but not least, uh, we will hear from Wolfgang Drexler who is Professor of Governance at Tallinn University of Technology and Honorary Professor of University College London in the Institute of Innovation and Public Purpose. And I'm very happy to say that, that he's also a center associate here at the Davis Center. He has served as advisor to the president of Estonia, a senior legislative analyst in the US Congress, has consulted many international institutions such as the OECD, the Council of Europe, World Bank, the European Union, and, um, and he, he has been the chief UNDP expert for the finalization of the 2005-2015 uh, National Innovation Strategy of Kazakhstan. And while in Almaty and Astana, he consulted um, our government, Kazakhstan's government, I'm a Kazakhstan citizen, uh, on EGAF development. So, uh, Welcome, welcome dear speakers. Uh, and uh, now let's go to business and start our discussion. And I would like to, um, to begin with questions to, to Anna. So um, Anna, what is the current state of digitalization uh, and e-gov development in Kazakhstan? And how do you assess this negotiated deal with, uh, with Sperbank? 
uh, what implications do you see? The floor is yours. Sergis, uh, hi everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be on a such wonderful panel today. Yeah. Let me share it in a nutshell. Uh, well, the status of digitalization in Kazakhstan uh, is quite complicated. So on one hand, we, we've seen like rapid uh, development and different speed of digitalization of certain state agencies. And on the other hand, we have not seen the strategic long-term view of where this digitalization should go or should lead to. For instance, like uh, how, when, and what instruments and tools should be there and who's gonna be in charge of that. For now, we see different state institution is following its agenda, uh, introducing certain tools or certain innovations or high-tech technologies um, for its own capacity building, and then introduce some proper solutions on the market. On the other hand, from the private perspective, from the business sector, at least we see lots of startups and other different uh, developments that are there on the market, and they go, go beyond Kazakhstan market, like Totem, for instance, or others. Uh, are present worldwide now. Uh, when it comes to uh, you know, the challenges, and let me then go back to the second point you mentioned, this, this Barabang deal, like everybody was speaking and discussing this issue. <laughs> so let me try to uh, frame it uh, in this way. What I see now, it's like different, different camps of people, at least here in the country, uh, you know, saying like, yes and no with, with, this, with this deal. Like the, the tech people, you know, who see, who see the deal. So there are also others who kind of see that, you know, this would lead to a total dependency on Russia. You know, there is also a, a third camp, for instance, of human rights defenders or NGOs institutions that have uh, serious concerns with uh, data protection and privacy issues. So those different camps are kind of trying to get the uh, attention of the state and, and the business sector and see what's in there. So for now, it's not transparent and we can only guess and speculate why this decision was made and how this decision was made and what's inside. Like, so we, we know that it should be done very quick, again, rapid as, as uh, the practice of the like, digitalization um, efforts show like the next year, but we haven't seen the ingredients and what to expect. At the same time, we cannot analyze the drawbacks or the strengths of the platform. Instead, rather what we see, we see, uh, you know, political and Russian scandals uh, or corruption scandals um, in, in the Russian Sberbach leadership. And that's also get another sense of, you know, satisfaction of this decision. Uh, the third point here is that, uh, you know, like from the research perspective and like from the ordinary citizen perspective, uh, people do not understand how would that impact, you know, the current EGAF system and how will that impact on um, the full understanding of the tech sector? Like for instance, now it's like, you can get any type of service very quickly online. And what, what, would, what would be different like in the next year when we're gonna change the platform? How would that impact people? How would that impact business? Uh, what kind of repercussions will this bring, you know, to uh, personal data and privacy issues? Like not within the Kazakhstan, uh, those system and within the broader uh, Eurasian system, if we see that this kind of platform will be expanded to other Central Asian countries. Uh, another point here, which is also kind of uh, disturbing, but at the same time interesting, would be that how would this play out in the bilateral relations between Russia and Kazakhstan? You know, like simple political relations. In on the other hand, uh, can we consider this a step as a first kind of political? institutionalization of you, the Eurasian Economic Union activity, uh, digital I, I agenda was um, been so far for some time within the Eurasian Economic Union, and there were different negotiations at the same time, different um, disagreements, I would say so, uh, build common system uh, for uh, for data exchange, for instance, and how, well, how would that impact the cybersecurity issues uh, and information security, both for Eurasian Economic Union and for Russia and for other Central Asian countries. Um, and why, for instance, um, Kazakhstan is one of the pioneering in this uh, sphere, no, not just digitalization, but you know, this GovTech sector, uh, why haven't we discussed or seen or utilize uh, Estonia experience? Like, um, 
a very tiny country in Europe, which is very successful and is, it's proud of its services and opportunities and you know, the transparent services that uh, the civil institutions and organizations uh, in Kazakhstan and Central Asia are trying to utilize uh, for this experience. Uh, and finally, this would be to kind of a broader question. Um, does it mean that Kazakhstan finally decides on, on which side of the camp it is playing, like basically when it comes to internet regulation and technology and high tech development, whether it's going to be like Russia and China and then the Western, you know, democratic world uh, with uh, the values of privacy, transparency and data protection. And I'll stop here and would be glad to get up later with the questions. Over to you, Nargis. Thank you very much, Anna. That, that's a great opening. Uh, let me go to Yahya for, uh, for, for your take on, on these issues. Uh, what, uh, you know, what are your hopes and uh, what are your concerns uh, in this regard? Um, uh, thank you very much. Well, first of all, uh, hello to everybody. Uh, it's a great uh, privilege to be a part of this discussion. Um, uh, you know, I, I will I will uh, talk about the the still only from purely you know the, the from technical perspective because uh, you know I'm an IT person. Uh, I do not have a, um, you know the, the views like uh, my esteemed uh, the, the fellow uh, panelists is, uh, mentioned earlier. Uh, the, the, there is a political aspect. Uh, there is a you know security aspect to this deal. Uh, and I, I don't have enough knowledge and experience to discuss uh, that, 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 that as aspect of the question. So I, I only talk about the, the technical aspect of this discussion. Um, historically, um, the how uh, the IT solutions or digitalization of the government services or GovTech has been uh, the, evolved within Kazakhstan is that there was a need for um, the optimization, increasing the efficiency of the existing processes. So uh, each um, the, the government uh, ministries or uh, the, um, the, the different uh, uh, the agencies, they have developed their uh, solutions as best as they could. So the, uh, each of them has been developed in a separate silos. Their evolution was different. Their life cycle was different. Their maturity level as from tech, you know, purely IT perspective was, uh, was different. The, the service management or development, uh, uh, the approaches were different. So uh, the pace was different depending on the priorities, depending on the technical skills and the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the competencies they had. Uh, and the, uh, the, the start was, uh, the kickoff was really good. And that's why we were able to achieve certain level uh, when, uh, when it comes to measuring of the digitalization of the government services. And uh, you know, it was obvious that we, we came to the point when the, 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 the uh, in, uh, initial inertia we had drove us up to a certain point and we had to come to the next level. And uh, uh, you know, it was uh, just a uh, matter of a time when we would come to the point when the, the, the platform uh, at platforming approach to the IT development or so-called the PaaS approach, the platform as a service approach, service-oriented approach would be just uh, the, on the horizon. So um, and at, the, at this point, uh, you know, from purely technical perspective, unification of all the, 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 the information systems that we had in uh, various ministries, you know, it, it was a timely uh, the question. We would come to this point, uh, but uh, if it's a right decision or wrong decision, time will tell from my perspective. But we would, we would be, we would, we would have to choose a certain platform, uh, or uh, whether if it's a spare or some other any other solutions, we would uh, definitely come to this point. And uh, well, at this stage, uh, as far as I can see. Uh, the, our Ministry for Digital Devel uh, Development, they are considering seriously the, the platform V from Zber. Uh, you, you mentioned the Zber Bank. I would say that this is not the, the bank solution. This is a Zber solution as, um, as it's, it's so-called the cloud-based solutions where uh, you would uh, pick and choose uh, depending on your need, various um, the tools, IT tools, and uh, that's what we call the GovTech. You, you don't necessarily have to uh, choose everything that is where offers you, you, you know depending on what is required what is it what is a, the maturity level of existing solutions pick and choose cloud-based solutions and move forward so um, 
that's that's my take so far uh, in terms of the the the, uh, the the how this approach is going at at the moment. So without any political discussion, that's how technical I see it. Um, thank thank you very much. Well, you're absolutely absolutely right. It's Sberbank is not uh, is not so much a bank uh, in 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 our case. It's a uh, uh, it's a tech company, uh, but uh, but uh, legally it is uh, Sberbank of Russia that you know signed uh, signed this memorandum together with uh, uh, with our government. But uh, you mentioned Yahya, you mentioned other solutions, other platform solutions. What what are the possibilities in your view apart from Sberbank? Um, I had an. Uh privilege of being part of a team when, when I was in UK, uh, when UK moved uh, to, towards the cloud-based solutions, there were various other uh, similar uh, solutions available, platform-based solutions available in the market. So for example, AWS, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud Services offers a similar so, um, the set of uh, services, cloud-based services. Uh, Microsoft Azure is another alternative where uh, you can use web-based or cloud-based solutions for analysis, for storage, for application development, for uh, service management or portal management, all of these uh, solutions that Sberbank's platform V offers. As far as I know, there are some, um, the, the Alibaba has a similar solution as well. Uh, so, uh, the, the, you know, there are not, you know, the hundred, not hundreds, in, in, not in hundreds, uh, that's, uh, these types of solutions, but there are definitely alternative uh, options available. And the UK has chosen, uh, as far as I remember, the AWS as their, their partner, uh, and that uh, they have migrated many of their the, uh, IT solutions to AWS. Um, so I hope that answers to your question, I guess, yeah? Well, we, yes, and, and uh, can we assume that there was this process of choosing, kind of choosing the best uh, solution, you think? Uh, well, unfortunately, I was not part of that discussion, and I don't know. I do not know for sure if there was an assessment or evaluation of uh, the options available in the market. Uh, but um, the, in terms of the the possibilities and options uh, available, the, 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 these alternatives could be considered uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, last last question, Yakia, and then no I'll move on. Uh, and. Uh, what, uh, once you choose the platform, uh, how committed uh, you know you are? Is it like a um, I don't know normal marriage or Catholic marriage? You know, is it uh, once you choose the platform? Is it kind of <laughs> you know? Well, uh, there, there are certain really difficult to change. yeah. There are certain flexibilities available. So the 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 the. the uh, one of the key benefits of having uh, uh, moving to the cloud-based solutions is that you will have a flexibility to move over. You don't necessarily even have to have all the solutions from one vendor. Uh, so um, I know a solutions where you know the Google solu uh, the uh, cloud solutions and Microsoft Azure solutions they could be interlinked and that they can be used all together. Uh, there are uh, definitely gateways uh, available uh, for, for that kind of combined or joint solutions. So, it, it, you know, it, it depends on what, uh, what is a strategic view, what, is, uh, uh, what, what, what business wants, as, as we say, in a corporate sector. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I'm sure we'll get more questions for you, Yakia. Uh, Alek, uh, let's let's get to you. Uh, what's uh, what's the current state of digital transformation in Russia? What's the role of Sber uh, Sberbank of Russia, Sber Group in it, and um, what is happening with Kazakhstan Russia Digital Cooperation? How do you assess the deal between Kazakh government and uh, Sberbank? Uh, and uh, the uh, well, I have a bunch of other questions, and already Anna started talking about it. Uh, uh, so the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Nargis, and thank you for all the other speakers. And uh, uh, I have several points I want to highlight, but if I speak for too long, feel free to interrupt me. Uh, so to start from the beginning, so as, as in many other countries in Russia, digital transformation is now a high priority. We have a multi-year digital economy uh, program, which is much broader, but it includes this digital transformation of, of the government. Uh, so Russia is very proud of its uh, uh, website and uh, service, it's called uh, Gosuslugi Government Services. 
and uh, it is considered one of uh, of the most kind of popular and uh, widely used services um, uh, across many other countries. And uh, the government is actually investing a lot of efforts in it. It has been modernized uh, this spring. They have a new chatbot. New additional services are moved to this to this platform. So it's kind of uh, it's a shiny and actually very helpful tool that we have here. But important important point. So uh, Zbir was not involved. In, in any capacity in creating this platform. So it was, uh, it was created by the Ministry of Digital uh, Development, previous Ministry of uh, uh, Telecommunications. And uh, uh, so it, it's kind of, uh, it was created by the government and by government contractors. Uh, so there are many other uh, kind of indicators that uh, digital transformation is, uh, is priority. We have every, so every, every federal uh, ministry and every ministry in Russian regions, they have, a uh, program for digital transformation, which is kind of a, a, a huge and uh, messy pro uh, process, but uh, it just shows you that there is a lot of priority. And like federal ministries, they have a chief digital transformation officers uh, uh, who are supposed to be at the level of deputy minister. So it's uh, it's big. Uh, so as, as, as in other countries and uh, as um, um, previous speaker, uh, Yahya Kulishov has already highlighted. So in in, he said that in Kazakhstan, many systems grew out of uh, individual ministries. And so this is, of course, the case in Russia. Uh, Russia is notorious for having hundreds, if not thousands, of uh, state information systems which can duplicate each other and not, uh, do not work well, well with each other, etc. So on the, other, on the one hand, it's big priority and uh, it, it has its successes. On, on another hand, hand uh, it hasn't been done in a kind of uh, comprehensive and uh, top-down manner, and it has been very kind of diverse. And so this is a big challenge. Uh, so uh, right now, one, one of the government's priorities is to create this new platform. It's called uh, GovTech, so it's basically an equivalent of uh, GovTech. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, so it, this idea was, uh, uh, as far as I understand from the reporting, it was proposed by, by Sberbank, and so Sberbank uh, Sber, uh, won uh, the kind of the tender to to help create this this platform, um, but more on that a bit uh, further. So Russia also has a bunch of uh, strategic and other regulatory documents on digital transformation. For example, just this week Russia adopted uh, the first uh, ever code of ethics uh, on artificial intelligence, and this is kind of a new thing because in we don't have similar codes in in other area, in other technological areas, but uh, we we now have this code which was developed basically by uh, by private companies and researchers, but was endorsed by the government. And so it was, so the bear of course played a huge role in developing this uh, this document. Uh, so what about Sbeer? So as I, as already was mentioned here several times, Sbeer is more than a bank. Uh, it has been uh, an, a developing story for several years, uh, but they officially announced last year that they have this new brand, Sbeer, without bank. And uh, they have, a, they regard them, uh, themselves as a, as a platform. So this is a, a historical, this is kind of a, a brainchild of uh, German Greff, who, uh, who, was, uh, who is kind of a visionary in Russia. And he observed what was happening around the world with the commercial organizations. Uh, and uh, he, he thought that he, he realized that banks were, uh, could potentially evolve into uh, such platforms. So Sbir now all offers many, much more, uh, much greater diversity of services and products. It has acquired many companies. For example, just uh, to illustrate, it has acquired uh, one of uh, oldest Russian streaming music streaming services, and now Sbir offers like music streaming. Uh, so, and and they try to, of course, they, these are not uh, perfectly integrated services, but uh, Sbir tries to integrate them together and offer a package of different services. Uh, so, as I said, Sbir was not originally involved in, in creating this gov digital government in Russia, but now it's getting more involved. Uh, so one, one, uh, one area where it's getting more involved is uh, through this uh, GosTech platform. Uh, so it's, it, it was a tender held by the Ministry of Digital Development, Sbir One, and they will help uh, create this new platform. So uh, how, how does Sbir do it? They use the, this uh, platform V, which we have already mentioned here, uh, platform V is basically uh, in-house platform that was developed by Sbir for its own infra digital infrastructure. It has been developed for uh, for several years, 
and uh, uh, actually it was open to the mar it was opened to the market only this uh, spring so it's kind of a new development uh, so so basically Sber is offering this to the Russian government uh, so you can see the logic we'll move to Kazakhstan uh, uh, next so this is one one area where Sber is involved in uh, this go digital government in Russia uh, so another area, it's uh, sort of involved in regulation. Uh, for example, uh, Sber and the Moscow government, they work together on this uh, regulatory sandbox in Moscow. So it's basically an experimental uh, regulatory regime for AI technologies, which has less uh, kind of limitations for developing AI technologies in, in Moscow. And this, of course, benefits Sber because it's one of major companies that invests in uh, artificial intelligence and it will benefit from... Uh, uh, from kind of more less uh, fair approach in Moscow. Um, and uh, this can be potentially used in other areas as well. And more generally, uh, Sber is, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, it's private, but it's not uh, only private. It has uh, these connections to the government and uh, within the government, it's considered uh, this center for uh, expertise on all things uh, related to artificial intelligence and uh, other digital technologies. Uh, so now we move to this uh, Sberbank and Kazakhstan partnership, which I, I would like to start first that, of course, it was reported in Russia, but it's not uh, it's not such a big kind of story in Russia compared to Kazakhstan, which is understandable because it's about Kazakhstan primarily, but nonetheless, so uh, j I just wanted to highlight this. So what is uh, Sber doing? Basically, it's offering uh, a partnership with Kazakhstan uh, to, uh, to adapt this platform V uh, for, uh, for Kazakhstan, and uh, to maybe in the future export it to other countries. Uh, so, as I said already, uh, it has not been, it has hasn't yet been tried. So, uh, at the same time as Kazakhstan uh, might uh, do it, uh, Russia will do will be doing this at the same time. So, it will be a kind of a parallel process. It's not like uh, Sber is offering uh, a platform that is already used in, by the Russian digital government. So, it, it will be a sort of a parallel experiment. And actually, in Russia, this. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, Gostech uh, project is in the experimental stage until uh, spring 2022. Um, yeah, so uh, then again, uh, we mentioned uh, Eurasian Economic Union. I, I think it's, it's crucial that we mention this. So first of all, in the Eurasian Economic Union, we had this agenda, digital transformation, digital everything, digital economy. But I think it's important that Russia is offering this project to uh, what not Russia, Sberbank is offering, well, with Russia, with President Putin's endorsement, is offering this project to Kazakhstan. I think it's, it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not surprising. So as uh, Anna already mentioned, Kazakhstan is, uh, is uh, very advanced in this field already. So it makes sense to, to co cooperate with a partner who has a lot of experience in this field. Uh, so then uh, Russia is offering also not only kind of, uh, it's not it's not an assistance in developing this service for Kazakhstan, but it's a long, longer term partnership potentially uh, with the potential for uh, to export in other countries. So I think uh, kind of politically it's interesting because Russia uh, uh, support, is supporting the Bank in developing uh, this project jointly with, uh, with Kazakhstan, and then maybe it can get other countries involved. So I think, uh, I, I mean, I observed the conversation in uh, in Kazakhstan, which was a bit uh, critical in some respects. But uh, from my perspective, it's uh, it's kind of uh, so. This is not how it's regarded in Russia. It's uh, kind of a, a mutually beneficial offer, and uh, Kazakhstan can benefit from it by being uh, supporting this uh, potential interesting project that that can um, can be interesting. Um, uh, can be in demand in other regions as well. Uh, so I will not uh, go for uh, too, too much uh, anymore, but uh, just a couple of words about this memorandum. So first of all, it's a, it's a memorandum kind of, of understanding. So it, even though it's uh, concrete and specific, it's not, uh, it's not an agreement. So uh, further details should be elaborated in the future. Uh, so then I think it's important also to highlight that uh, the structure of, of this whole enterprise is not that Sberbank comes and it creates something from, from scratch. So first of all, it will partner with the consortium in Kazakhstan. Uh, so it, this, so basically this memorandum ensures that uh, it's not kind of it, the, this whole deal is not biased towards, skewed towards, towards Russia or towards Sberbank. So Kazakhstan has a, a huge stake in this. 
so also uh, there is a strategic partner, a technological partner, a company called BTS Digital, which will, which is like a developer company and which will help, as far as I understand, implement and adapt this system to, to Kazakhstan. Another issue and maybe final point, which uh, I, I did not find in this in this memorandum, but which uh, uh, Kazakhstan officials highlighted, is that uh, one of the advantages of partnering with the uh, Sberbank is that Sberbank is ready to uh, to share uh, source code for for its products. So basically, source source code for this platform V, and uh, it, it is true that it's not so it's not kind of an open. Uh, kind of open code uh, environment, but it's still more than just a uh, proprietary uh, software uh, because it allows for uh, like more trust. It, it allows for uh, Kazakhstan and uh, Kazakhstan uh, companies that will be involved to have more kind of trust in the system, more understanding of what's, uh, what it will look like, et cetera, et cetera. So with that, uh, I will stop. Uh, I think I, I did not speak for too long, but I can answer additional questions and uh, the, uh, the mic is back Thank to you, you. Nargis. Thank you very much, Alek. Uh, that, uh, uh, that that was very uh, very helpful. Uh, and um, the, I, I guess that well, that was one of the the criticisms in Kazakhstan is that the, the system is so new, you know, and not not tested yet. So why why do we sign up uh, sign up for it? And uh, the uh, another concern was uh, the kind of this dependence on dependence on Russia, whether you're kind of becoming part of this kind of Russian bloc, um, uh, given the certain decoupling of the, you know, digital decoupling that is going on in the world and uh, uh, the kind of uh, in line with the internet sovereignty and all that. Uh, so uh, how, how do you see that? Do, do, do you see some kind of blocks emerging or, or not? Uh, yeah, so on, on your first point about uh... I forgot the first point. <laughs> oh, it was the, 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 no, it's just a comment that uh, indeed it's a very new platform. Oh, but the new, uh, new, new thing. So uh, I agree that it's a new thing, but so uh, Sberbank, as far as I understand, it's offering this product not only to governments, but it's offering it to the industry. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not kind of, it's, it's not new in, in, the, in a way that it doesn't exist. It's uh, new because it, it has been on the market for a, uh, Kind of short period of time, but it was tested by Sberbank, and Sberbank, uh, from what we see, it's quite successful in its uh, in building its own platform. So, of course, it's not a solution that you can just uh, take and uh, and use uh, just just from from the start. So you have to adapt it. But it's not uh, it's not uh, kind of new, kind of hundred percent new product. Uh, then also one of the advantages is that uh, so Russia is a huge country and. Um, uh, we have, we have as, I, as I said, we have these hundreds and maybe thousands of different services, different go government platforms. So it's, uh, I think uh, Kazakhstan is also, is also quite big and uh, we have similar kind of these historical kind of similarities with uh, how, how governments develop their digital services. So I think this will also, there, there will also be some, some parallels that can benefit uh, Kazakhstan. As far as uh, this decoupling, uh, so, I don't know. I think uh, so. We it's not it's not a partnership between Russia and Kazakhstan. It's a partnership between uh, uh, between a Russian company which has uh, kind of more ambitious goals uh, endorsed by Russia, but also between uh, Kazakhstan and some other Kazakhstan stakeholders. So it's not. I think it's important to see these nuances. So it's not like Russia is uh, imposing some kind of uh, its own model. Uh, so uh, I think it's a solution that uh, we don't have. To too many of those, and uh, I think uh, Yahia already highlighted some other alternatives, which uh, I'm, I'm sure have their own benefits and their their own deficiencies. Uh, so, but uh, I think it's kind of uh, it's it would be strange for me to talk about this decoupling because uh, both Russia and Kazakhstan are uh, were uh, the initiators of this uh, Eurasian economic integration, and uh, so. It is commonly understood that uh, it, maybe not integration in digital economy, but making our economies more efficient in this digital era is definitely uh, kind of a core part of, of, of uh, what we have to do now. So uh, I don't see this as a, as a potential kind of area where 
like Kazakhstan would be interested in breaking away from Russia or Russia would be interested in kind of safeguarding, um, protecting that it, it's came from, from the outside. And also I want to maybe mention that it's not about, so we are not talking about uh, this like sovereign internet. So uh, we have a different kind of different uh, system and other organizations that are involved in the sovereign uh, runet and it's not part of uh, so there is no intersection at this point and so i think i think there is uh, we should not like uh, we, sh we should not bring all other kind of issues some of which are problematic issues into into this uh, equation uh, so i think uh, uh, at least from what I see now, and uh, I, I have no other indication. Well, there is some, as I said, there is a lot of criticism among some people in Kazakhstan. But other than that, looking at this memorandum and at what uh, Sberbank is doing in Russia, I see no no reason to to kind of over politicize this uh, this issue. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alek. Uh, let's go to Wolfgang for the uh, for a bigger picture. How do you how do you assess this development? Oh, but, uh, yes, no, not anymore. Okay. Um, yeah, um, it's really interesting how, Nagis, you were able to assemble this great uh, panel with uh, really complementary views. That means uh, with uh, four very different views that uh, stab at this problem or this issue and, and that look at it from uh, different perspectives. For me, this is primarily a political story. So, I mean, you cannot politicize it because this is all about politics and the technology and the economy for me are actually side stories to this. Um, already, um, um, the, the one thing if we deal with technology in society is that we, uh, I mean, the first insight is that technology is never neutral. And as digital as our worlds become, the more important it does uh, become what we do in the digital sphere. Again, one of the first things you learn if you are talking about technology in society is that your phone is not a tool because you cannot fully control your phone because partially your phone controls you. And something so incredibly big as a platform like this, uh, that, that can never be neutral. Who owns this platform is a very direct ownership part of what is very rightly called uh, um, digital sovereignty. Yeah. So um, the ownership here is, is um, not something that the market produced or that is particularly in, uh, efficient, but it's a political decision. And actually, I think that if you look at the rhetoric from the Kazakh government, uh, that is actually backing this up. That means this deal was not promoted if you look at the political speeches, the signing and all of these things in Kazakhstan from the government side, it's always sold as a political thing, as a new partnership a partnership with Russia, a new level of partnership with Russia and uh, demonstrating mutual trust. That is a phrase you get again and again from everybody on the Kazakh side, like uh, Tokayev is, is, is saying this all the time. This is what this proves. Now, you only need to emphasize mutual trust if this is an issue, uh, uh, both of that it could be missing or not. And, and that means that it seems that this deal was made um, for political reasons primarily, and not for technological reasons or economic reasons, if you will. Yeah, I mean, this is, let's take this um, communication seriously. And um, I absolutely agree with what my predecessor said, and also what you said, that is that um, uh, Kazakhstan's uh, digital track record and ICT record in general is quite good. Um, it's been helpful, it's been positive, but it's checkered in the sense that it is better in some areas than in others. Still, what that means is that on the level of digital competence that Kazakhstan overall has, um, I am not struck by the need to outsource such an important part of your digital sovereignty. And if this is not the case, then we may ask. Actually, the highlight of this story for me is the letter by the Kazakh IT guys. 
that for me is the biggest part of the story actually and it shows a very very high level of competence and of insight and of analytical skills and i actually almost entirely agree with this that means what uh, the kazakh it um, experts say is the problem with this deal is exactly the problem with this deal and it's basically two the first one is again the loss of digital sovereignty and the second thing is in spite of all this openness and cooperation and so on a stifling of local talent that means i don't allow the uh, kazakh it sector to develop this by itself which also for the it sector in itself would be a great boost um, and uh, that is something that puts the entire story a little bit into the corner of um, what these days is called data colonialism that meant something more specific and more narrow. This is not the case here, but this entire idea that if large firms, let alone countries, own significant parts of your digital infrastructure in a time where reality is becoming more and more digital, this is a very serious matter that you need to look into. And now, if I look at the other side, um, it is extremely difficult for me to look at Sparebank and its uh, CEO and to call this kind of a neutral business enterprise that is not aligned with Russian interests, especially not at a time when, I mean, just yesterday at the East Asia Forum, uh, Putin made a point of uh, Russian engagement in the digital sphere, even in East Asia, for East Asia to learn from Russia. Now, mind you, there are good reasons for that. And indeed, Russia's story is also a successful digital story. But um, Sparebank, I mean, okay, let's make a Davis Center point here and say that since its inception under Nikolai I, this was a political bank with a very specific agenda that has been used for uh, basically government priorities that are not 100% the, the same of the bank, but always affiliated with this. And I would say that from the political pronouncements and the role that Sparebank plays, the phrase that, that I like to use here, and it comes very well in with your previous work and also the document that you presented in which Anna had this chapter of what I like to call the digital fur road. That means that there is something like a digital silk road in an in an historical Russian way, you know, and uh, th that is something that is quite real. That there is a geostrategic interest in, um, shall we say, digital control, digital influence, or at least digital presence, which also is lucrative, but which also makes overall sense. And so, for me, this is a really important part of this story. I would leave it at that. Thank you, thank you so much. And very interesting on the Russian <laughs> Russian furrow. That's that, that's uh, yeah. There will be a Davis Center contribution uh, to to the discussion. Uh, and uh, indeed, uh, the um, ICT companies in countries like Russia and China, like private private companies, they're not fully private. Uh, and, and uh, yeah, we need to think about it. And the letter you mentioned, um, maybe we should uh, say a couple of words to the audiences. Uh, it was a letter by the IT community uh, of Kazakhstan to the president of the Republic of uh, warning, uh, basically warning about the, the possible implications, negative implications of this deal and asking, uh, to, uh, asking him to protect the digital sovereignty and potential uh, potential of the of the country uh, was it uh, when did it uh, come out was it spring or summer if, if Anna or Yahya can can tell us um, um, I'm not exactly sure when the the, 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 issue, uh, the letter was issued but I know that there was a lot of discussions on social network um, and I know that there was a, even a, a delegation of, uh, you know, Kazakh IT experts who visited uh, uh, Moscow to um, have a closer look at this very solution. And um, obviously, you know, uh, the, 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 there are all um, 
uh, key components of the digitalization market in Kazakhstan. So as, as you know, uh, the, the market is quite saturated. So we have uh, the key players who are in a various roles involved in digitalization. They have contracts, they, uh, they take part in strategic developments, they submit the, the, the ideas, and they are key uh, uh, the, the partners in, in this devel development. So, um, uh, and, and obviously they, they would issue the, uh, the, the, the criticism or whatever else they, they had in their mind. But um, um, from other hand, um, you know, and I'm a purely IT guy, so my approach to this whole deal is, is purely pragmatic. Uh, we should, be, you know, all the decisions should be, obviously, you know, should be transparent, obviously should be discussed in openly, but it should be based on what is your business need, what Kazakhstan needs, what we need, not uh, what uh, Zber needs or Russia needs or Eurasian Union needs, what Kazakhstan needs. So as, as I said earlier, yes, we have, a you know, every system, every IT system, whether it, it's not necessarily the IT system, everything has a life cycle. It needs to go through a certain level of maturity. Uh, what we need today not necessarily will be needed tomorrow. So from, from that pr pragmatic uh, you know, perspective, um, you know, uh, it could be you know, that the best decision we might have made at, the, at this point, uh, but uh, there could be some other alternatives. And uh, the, the, uh, the IT folks letter that uh, you mentioned earlier, it, it purely emphasizes the, what we should be considering uh, when we're choosing a platform. Uh, such as bears so uh, the the security availability of services the pro data protection and etc et so that, that using the local uh, developing of lo local uh, it communities um, the, the the leveraging them using them and uh, making sure that they develop as well and not necessarily we're just pouring money into a one solution that uh, you know if, if in future if, if they go bust you know where they, they we may not be able to use it so um the, and I, I can understand the where the, the concerns from the IT community from Kazakhstan, definitely. Um, thank, thank you very much. And I think that the, the, the issue of the process, kind of uh, due process, <laughs> diligent process of decision making on this super important existential issues is extremely, extremely important. You mentioned that uh, you mentioned your UK experience. Um, what was the, the the processes? What were the processes there? Um, did, did they involve any public discussions, or you know, kind of what, what was the deliberation process? Because there was no deliberation process in Kazakhstan. Was sort of you know, kind of out uh, for the IT community. It was not out of the blue, but for for most of the citizenry, it was completely out of the blue uh, decision. Uh, I I do not necessarily agree that it it's. It's it's not you know that it's not like this decision is made by few people and they just you know we're signing a deal no you know even the uh, if you look at the saturation of the various levels of discussions going on on social network. Uh, I mean, yeah, probably, yeah, it's, we are not the UK, uh, you know, we do not go on the street and just, you know, uh, making, a, you know, the, the, the discussing it openly in the street, but there are certain elements of discussion going on. Uh, you asked about the UK, um, the, the, the approach. Um, the approach was um, slightly different, but similar. So um, the government uh, has issued, you know, the, the strategic view on digitalization of the government services. So one of the key aspects was saying that, okay, yes, we're going to go towards the cloud-based solution. We will not depend on certain technological stacks, or we will not depend on specific vendors, but the cloud-based solutions is a future. And based on that, the general approach, the outline strategic, um, that the approach has been been uh, agreed upon and uh, and the, the various agencies use that as a guideline on uh, when they develop their the, the, the strategic programs and uh, when they um, the, the take into consideration of what uh, the technological stack or what platform what type of what version of the software they have to use to in order to develop uh, their next solution so that that was the guideline is used uh, for um, the, the execution of the programs. So um, 
the, the 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 way how we are going in Kazakhstan is is pretty much a similar, uh, except that that guideline hasn't been issued yet. But I'm sure that that that, that this is this is how we're gonna go if. Um, if, if that, that's how I see at least uh, that the, the best way to go forward is um, the the plat the the pass based solution the platform as a service based solution or infrastructure as a service based solutions should be outlined in a, some kind of in a guideline and should be scrolled down towards the the, the various ministries uh, who are the who are the owners of the budgets owners of these solutions. Um, that's how I see so far. Yeah, I, I wonder if it's possible given the kind of really tight timeline that, that we have here um, outlined in the memorandum. Wolfgang, uh, given your Estonian expertise, uh, what, should, what should be the kind of the, the, the process of decision making? Well, as, as a matter of fact, Anna mentioned that before, but there has actually been Estonian involvement in Kazakh e-governance development since a quarter of a century on various levels, government, semi-government, private uh, entrepreneurs, former IT guys, and so on. So there has been a pretty close uh, cooperation. In fact, you mentioned that when I was um, in Astana in, in 2004, for a completely different story, I was asked uh, into the Ministry of the Interior and asked, can you do something with e-governance since you're from Estonia? And I said, well, not everybody from Estonia can comment on e-governance, but as it happens, I actually can, and there we go. Um, but um, I think it is quite... Um, when you say how should the process go, that depends entirely of what the key stakeholders to the process actually want. So the question actually is what is digital governance, what is GovTech and so on in Kazakhstan actually for? Yeah. So um, uh, you would think it is keeping up with the times and the world is digitizing to provide better services. But, you know, um, there is a lot of digitally very advanced countries in the world um, that are clearly not into uh, doing stuff that the people want. That's not their main priority. Their priority is somewhere else. Um, so, uh, you know, as, as you know from the Digital Silk Road, of course, very well, there is the modernist positioning. That means you want to look cool as a governor and better than the others. That is, that is quite important. We always over uh, underrate the vanity of governance people when they meet other ones that they want to do something cool. There is the digital Leninism aspect of it all. That means that digitalization leads to the surveillance state. And that is not something tied to a specific system. Keyword surveillance capitalism, right? And of course, there is the idea of competitive authoritarianism. That means that authoritarian and semi-authoritarian regimes still need to provide quality services to the citizens because there is a lot of things you can buy off with if you provide digital convenience in our time. So um, it is not entirely clear in this discussion what the interest in this um, digitalization of the Kazakh government is at all. So it's a difficult normative question to ask of how they should proceed because um, we would have to say um, if they wanted a certain form of government that we might like or from their own inner perspective of the kind of government they want to do. If you allow me a small footnote, by the way, both in Kazakhstan and in Russia, I would actually not talk about digital transformation because digital transformation means that the institutions that are doing um, the digitalization are also being transformed by themselves. What I actually see is very complex digitalization, but that's, that's a small thing. But uh, why it is important in this context is because it shows you something about this modernist positioning, just like that these memoranda and so on, they're very cool. They're very with it. They are the last in techie speech, not in, uh, not in governance speech or democracy speech, but certainly in techie speech. I mean, they're, they're pushing all the right buttons, or at least the buttons from one year ago. And um, so uh, that, that gives me also um, uh, an indication towards that side, that this is at least one of the reasons that the Kazakh government has in, in pursuing the, I would still say, uh, digital governance agenda. And I know I haven't answered your question directly, but that was on purpose. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. And speaking of stakeholders, I think it's interesting to note, and actually one of the participants uh, in our webinar mentions that the, the partner of Sber, Sber, uh, Sberbank uh, uh, in Kazakhstan is the BTS Digital, uh, an affiliate of the Eurasian Research uh, Resources, sorry, uh, Resources Group. Uh, and uh, the, well, Unlike, uh, well, we can say that Sberbank is sort of a success story. Uh, we know very little about BTS and, uh, you know, <laughs> and its, uh, its successes. Uh, and, uh, well, we all know about the kind of the big role uh, ERG plays in uh, Kazakhstan's economy and political, <laughs> political economy. Let's, uh, we can put it, put it this way. Uh, so, and, um, well, as, um, as our, uh, participant mentions uh, ERG used to have uh, big debts uh, restructured by uh, by Sberbank. So there are all these multiple linkages uh, uh, <laughs> that are part of the uh, part of the uh, picture. So you know who's interests, what interests, and uh, you know how it all sort of uh, uh, plays out. Uh, but now I want to um, I want to go to Alek, uh, we received a question linked to our to the already mentioned uh, digital uh, digital Silk Road. Um, uh, it's about the uh, partnership with Huawei. Okay, here it is. Uh, in the light of Sber's partnership with Huawei on Sber Cloud, what role are Huawei in China playing in Ega? Alek, if you can yeah, shed some light. Thank you. Uh, I also uh, already reacted to this question uh, online, but uh, I can uh, tell it publicly. So from what I understand, so Huawei has a uh, notable presence in Russia and it has its own uh, digital transformation agenda. Uh, but from, from what I understand, it's involved in uh, digital transformation of particular sectors, uh, including in, in medicine, in some uh, sectors of economy, uh, but it has not been uh, anywhere close to, to, to the digital transformation of the government. So uh, I think uh, also going back to, to the partnership with the Huawei, I'm not uh, familiar to the details, but uh, so Sberbank is huge. It has a very diverse portfolio of services and products, and uh, I'm sure it can partner with uh, Huawei on, one, on, on, on some issues and uh, it can be kind of uh, separated from, from other issues. So. Uh, I haven't seen any role in, in digital uh, transformation of the government for Huawei here. Uh, yeah, yes, thank you. Uh, but we do see the kind of the, the blossoming of uh, digital cooperation between between Russia, Russia and China. And we're sort of in the same area <laughs> with, <laughs> with these giants. Um, uh, well, yeah, uh, so I think, uh, so it's more of a philosophical discussion, uh, but uh, so in Russia, Russia is very Russian officials are very pr proud of Russia having this uh, uh, big uh, talent in uh, in STEM in uh, digital technologies. If Russia having its own tech giants. Uh, if you if you attend several events on digital anything digital in Russia, you will hear m multiple times that we are one of a uh, few countries that has its own social media that has its own uh, search engine as 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 leaders are not global companies but but russian so russian uh, russian officials and uh, russians in general are proud of it uh, and uh, that's why we want uh, i think because it's, it's becoming more important in in the world today uh, it, it would be uh, natural if if this was our kind of competitive advantage of, of the country of the nation uh, but of course, when it comes to uh, to the practice, to how it's implemented, it's not that easy. And uh, here again, I think that uh, this uh, this case with uh, Sberbank and uh, Kazakhstan is interesting because if you go back uh, a year or two years, R Russia had nothing to uh, well, Russian market, Russian government had not nothing of that kind of scale to offer to Kazakhstan or to to other Eurasian uh, to its other Eurasian partners, for that matter. So uh, since since uh, since uh, there is now this kind of new new solution, 
uh, which is new, but uh, which is promising. Uh, it, it's kind of, I don't know if bureaucratically, but just uh, from the, this uh, ideational perspective, it makes sense for, for, for the Russians because uh, we thought that we were great in this uh, space already. And now we have uh, this other solution that can be offered to, to our uh, uh, partner governments. Uh, but going back to, to how it was implemented uh, in, uh, in practice, uh, I mean, I, I only learned about it from the news, so uh, I have, I'm not private to how these discussions went. And of course, as in many instances where governments partner with tech companies or governments uh, discuss these issues between each other, of course, there is always a need for more transparency and uh, uh, th there is nothing I can say uh, against it. Uh, so, of course, if, if it was explained on, uh, in, in, in more detail, then maybe some, some questions could have been uh, preempted. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but, we will, we will, yeah, yeah, but things are uh, the way they are, so... Uh, there are, yeah, there are not, definitely not enough de details and information about, uh, about this. But, I mean, we have this memorandum, which is already good, because in some, in some cases where we have uh, some agreements, they may, may not be kind of... Uh, yeah, provided but, in public. Yeah. Right, 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 right. But this memorandum also, it wasn't made public right away, right? Uh, it's because there was this public reaction that the government finally uh, released it, which is, yeah, <laughs> which, is, which is somewhat typical. Um, Anna, can I, can I ask you what you think about this? Uh, does this growing cooperation with uh, digital cooperation with, uh, with Russia, with, uh, well, with, with Russian companies, Chinese companies, uh, do they constrain, uh, constrain um, our cooperation with, uh, with, uh, with other partners, potential partners, with Western partners, for example? What's your take on it? Yeah, that's that's a great question indeed. I mean, I was trying to reflect to what uh, Alex previously mentioned, like um, when you go in the market and when someone, you know, like not a close friend, but a friend of yours offer you, you know, experimental solution, which has been on the market so far, but, you know, on with a different price and probably with different other candies or something. And you think, um, should do something. Because on the other hand, on the other part of the market, you can see other, types of, uh, you know, technologies, tools or candies or whatever, that might be a bit costy or might be a bit different with different languages or codes or whatever, or partners. You still select to, you know, a certain one. You still choose to, uh, you know, to cooperate with, with, who, with who you basically cooperate. And I absolutely agree with what Wolfgang previously mentioned, like, should be something when you see that you know your digital infrastructure will be in line or not owned necessarily, but kind of built by a foreign country. This is the question that kind of concerns me more. And it doesn't really matter whether this is Russia or China or any other country that could you know help Kazakhstan particularly build its own kind of you know not EGAF necessarily, but kind of you know the bigger of this whole um, unification and institutional institutionalization and others other things that are necessary now to combine all this uh, digital attempts of different state institutions kind of in one um, in one hand or in one place and I'm also kind of concerned with uh, you know an, an argument not an argument but the point is that people say like there is not that much on the market. There is not that much successful on the market. Well, definitely there should be some. And yeah, here previously mentioned that there are some companies, that, you know, offer different types of solutions. And how we can be sure that this is exactly the solution that we, I mean, when, when I say we, like not only the state institutions and agencies, but also the business sector, you know, like small and medium enterprises want. We haven't seen any discussion on that. That was you know, a decision that was made politically, not publicly, and not discussed at all before, and obviously. Yeah, stop here. Yes, uh, yes, in, in, indeed. And, um, and obviously, uh, digital sovereignty is very important, uh, but also international cooperation, uh, you know, kind of adopting similar standards and ways is also very important. How do we square this, uh, square this circle? How, how do you find kind of... The... It's not really the circle, Nargis, you know, it's about, 
You know, it's about the foreign policy that Kazakhstan used to have, you know, like balancing between different actors. And it was, you know, the strength of ours, kind of not balance politically or diplomatically. And now I think that's exactly the time to kind of, you know, push forward this agenda, kind of diversify vendors. If but we what, stay, yeah. if we stay with this platform, you know, and then we also should, you know, initiate this the discussion of, uh, you know, building common values, what we understand and how we understand things. What would be the limitations? What what kind of protocols would be there? You know, it's not mm -hmm. about the issue of who owns the code and whether you know personal data will be leaked to Russia and then Russia will know everything about Kazakhstan citizens. No, I mean obviously not. In general, when something happens, who's going to respond to that? And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's all, not only about the ecological issues and aspects, you know, coding and IT, but rather more you know strategic. I would say, you mm -hmm. know, in terms of planning and seeing it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, uh, maybe Wolfgang and Yahya want to reflect on that, and uh, and I, I also, if I can add a question, uh, can we develop our own indigenous platform, or we are kind of we have to, uh, you know, have to work with the with the others, and whether you know you can do part of it with somebody, and you know, okay, if I am thinking about the kind of strategic. Uh, energy sector, right? There you invite different investors and you diversify. And this way you kind of, it helps you to carry out your uh, multi-vector foreign policy. And this way, you know, support support your sovereignty. So you are kind of internationalizing, but you are kind of uh, mitigating these dependencies vis-a-vis -vis certain, certain actors. Uh, if we take the digital sphere, you know, what can be done? Who, who wants to take it first? Shall I go to you, Wolfgang, and then maybe to you, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so yeah, what I absolutely agree with is first of all that the uh, different platforms that Yahya mentioned, uh, they are all problematic in their own right and for their various reasons. But indeed, there is a lock-in effect here of what technology you take. And of course, theoretically, you can assemble things by yourself to a certain extent, but it's tricky. You know, I mean, if you're if you're going for one brand, this is why the IT experts, by the way, have said, and you know, this is a very valuable deal. A lot of money is involved here, but that only about 30% are the current price and 70% are follow-up costs that will be uh, paid to spare in the years to come, you know, until this platform is obsolete, because indeed this kind of platform thing or labeling as a platform is the call of the times right now. Even if you don't understand what it is, you still need to kind of do it as a government to position yourself in a modern way. I mean, that's that's really what you need to do. Um, but um, it's um, I am probably the least qualified on this panel to really talk about the IT capacities as they seriously exist in Kazakhstan. Yeah, so uh, uh, many here can do this better. But from my understanding and my reading, this capacity of if you can call it pockets of excellence is rather high. And so the more you can do, the better. It is so important for the sovereignty issue as well as the letter mentioned. And I, I really would like to emphasize that again. Um, this is not only helping the digital sovereignty, but also the buildup of an IT ecosystem inside the country. And you, uh, whatever you, um, one of the things we know in public governance reform is that you can only outsource or you should only outsource what you don't have to outsource. Because if you outsource things that you can't do yourself, you do not know really what the terms of references are and you can't judge what you're getting. So as we know in general, in what I would call technological development is there is no way around um, indigenous capacities. There is no way around what you do yourself. So the more you put into there, the better. And quite frankly, it is true that um, it is the call of the times to have a platform like that, a unified platform, although some of the most successful digital countries do not have it and didn't start this way, you know? But, but what I think is important is um, the argument, we need this now, we need to rush and therefore need, we need to purchase a ready-made 
I am not sure that this pressure is that strong and that it wouldn't be worth uh, to take a longer time and uh, more of stakeholder, true stakeholder involvement, and to develop that uh, by itself. I do think that would be the royal way forward rather than purchasing the ready-made. And um, especially if you look at the modernist positioning, yes, indeed, um, the current deal as it is described um, does include a lot of Kazakh involvement in the further development and, if you will, participation, but definitely not as much at all at a as a local creation to a wider extent uh, would have made possible. Thank you. Thank you. I see that Alek has a comment, but first let me go to Yahya. Yahya, you are uniquely kind of... <laughs> Capable to answer to answer this question. Do we have the capacity? How much indigenous capacity we have, and uh, uh, do we need to rush? Well, uh, do we need to rush? Well, uh, as an IT person, I will say yes. We have to always rush because uh, <laughs> that's the way forward. Uh, because uh, the, the having uh, you know the, the as I said earlier. The maturity of uh, the IT, uh, the, the communities, the, and IT solutions, if you, if they are, if they are just you know uh, limited by the boundaries that we have, uh, they 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 will develop just within these boundaries. Um, you know, I will just um, mention another problem that we have within IT community in Kazakhstan. A lot of guys, uh, the, the the young girls and guys who uh, who. Who, who you know who are experts in this in IT in Kazakhstan they tend to leave the country they work for Russian companies they work for Western companies because they don't see any potential growth for them how they can use their expertise and knowledge within the country the reason is simple uh, because the the maturity levels of IT solutions and the approaches IT companies or you know it's it's an ecosystem of the the, the IT, IT uh, uh, the, the the platforms that we have is limited. The the moving to the whether if it's Sber or any other platforming solution will help definitely Kazakhstan to grow the IT community into a next level. It will help to uh, develop the the IT solutions and the availability of solutions into a next level. I'll give you an example. Um, so we have. Um, governmental platform. So if you submit your uh, the issues related to um, any government services, which is digitalized, it will, uh, you will get answer, but it's not as fast as you wish. The reason is simple because the, 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 the root cause analysis of that problem takes some time. So your, your, your questions will be taken by the one agency. They will forward that, uh, the, that question to the another agency who might be the, the, the data provider for that issue. They will forward it to the, the next agency because they might be on the gatekeeper of that, uh, the, the, the information flow and et cetera, et cetera. So the combining and consolidating all of the services, having a single uh, similar structure on the data and the interface and integration and the data exchange between these uh, the various systems, standardizing them, having them in a single platform will definitely help. So from that perspective, I would say, yes, uh, we need to rush. It will help to develop the local IT communities, definitely uh, uh, the go on that one. Uh, but um, whether if it's um, the... Uh, the the I, I, the the spare solution will help in that answer uh, in that from that perspective I'm not sure. Okay, thank thank you very much. Uh, we have very few minutes um, before we need to wrap up. And uh, Alek has a comment. Alek, if you can be brief, and also I want you to uh, give one recommendation to Kazakhstan that you want to. Yeah, just one recommendation to Kazakhstan you want to leave us with, Alek. Recommendation. Okay, so for a few few comments. So first, I think uh, of course there are many options, but I think uh, we let's not pretend that Kazakhstan being close partner of Russia will not kind of seriously consider in a priority manner some something from Russia. So I know it's not about it's not only about politics, but we have this kind of strategic partnership. So it, it would be kind of weird if uh, and we uh, the way we are discussing this is if these are like just two random countries, not close countries. Of course they are close and. Uh, uh maybe personal relationship played a role too so but it's kind of how how it happens uh, in terms of uh, what it means 
of course, uh, I would not agree with uh, what Logan said. He said that uh, we cannot import it from, we cannot outsource it. Of course, if you look at any other type of infrastructure, it can be outsourced. Uh, look, there is a limited number of countries that build nuclear uh, power plants. So, of course, uh, and, but then they are not operated by these countries, they are operated by other countries. And if you look uh, closely, even at this memorandum that has already been made public, we see that uh, there is a there is a kind of limited role for uh, for Sberbank. It's not it's not like Sberbank comes and does all the thing. And uh, also another comment on on whether it's a new and untried solution. Uh, I think it's not a kind of. I think we should not like over over emphasize this feature. It, it, it's a new solution, but uh, that's the, the the whole point of this partnership that it can be adapted to to. Uh, to Kazakhstan's uh, purposes and potential in the future for other countries. Uh, as I'm not, I don't think I'm, I'm in a position uh, to in in a position of kind of advising Kazakhstan. But of course, as, as I already said, that uh, more transparency in this regard uh, would be good. Uh, maybe some uh, broader engagement uh, with uh, uh, not only with Russia but with other countries would be good. M not only on this kind of senior. Uh, gov tech level but also on a smaller uh, level for example as uh, Yahya said uh, uh, there are many uh, uh, developers from Kazakhstan who work for Russian companies so they can be involved in some kind of kind of maybe public diplomacy or like people to people exchanges etc so of course in our part of the world most decisions are made at this senior level and it's uh, it's kind of it's not surprising because uh, this is how diplomacy is understood here uh, but uh, this this particular agreement is not maybe uh, it's not an, an an exception from from it's not some kind of an aberration. Uh, but maybe we should consider that that uh, uh, there are indeed uh, kind of public perception uh, issues, and uh, they they should be managed not only from this like PR perspective, but also through more kind of intensive con context between people. Yes. Thank you. And proper deliberation, I would say. Wolfgang, uh, can you respond to what uh, Alex said and also give a recommendation, but very briefly? Yes, um, I think it's a great example that Alex brought, but for me, because I would also definitely not recommend to countries to take nuclear technology from others that they really don't fully understand. Um, in fact, and this is a bit going to uh, Yahya's point, um, there is a certain tendency of techiness, you know, valley thinking or Kendall Square thinking that you need to rush. And I absolutely understand that. That's also part of the entrepreneurial spirit and so on. But then it is part of the political sphere to think about of whether that has been done in a decent way, inclusionary, just um, really oriented towards both the values and the strategy that we actually have. And um, in it, absolutely, IT and e-governance policy in a lot of countries was elite driven and top down, but at some point you need to move into greater stakeholder participation to make it really work. And um, I think um, this case that we are discussing now is a great one that if you listen very carefully and you indeed read the documents and you read what the stakeholders say, you do get a pretty clear picture and uh, you know what to do. And uh, so it depends on the motivation of the Kazakh government of what they want, whether they want to take the one path or the other. And uh, I think I'm not alone if I say, although I, like Alec, don't have any recommendations to give to the Kazakh government, that I hope it is going one path and not the other. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Anna. I could not agree more. Uh, just again, uh, reinforcing the need of uh, rethinking and then re-strategizing needs and more transparency. That's that's exactly the thing that I started my opening remarks, right? Because we, we have to know and we have to uh, participate in this public discussions about these issues, not just test and then provide some additional information when it is required, you know, for political purposes, to communicate in this process, like people, people to people and etc. And I'll stop here. Thanks, Nargis. Over to you. Thank you very much. Yahya, leave us with words of wisdom. <laughs> well, uh, whether if it's um, uh, not a, a good deal or bad deal, will, or just what time will tell, but it's definitely good uh, for IT community and for the government uh, to uh, move to the next level of the 
the, the evolution that has to happen. Uh, and, uh, you know, I really hope that out of this deal will grow, uh, you know, uh, a lot uh, greater services, um, greater uh, the IT com community, IT community will become stronger. Uh, and it's an investment in the IT community. So that's, that's good for, for us anyway. Thank you. Thank you. On this optimistic uh, note, uh, let's start closing, uh, closing the event. Thank you very much, uh, dear speakers. Um, I think it was a very good discussion. I, I learned a lot. And uh, thank you, audiences, for tuning in, uh, both in this webinar uh, and, uh, and on YouTube. And I want to thank uh, the Davis Center event team, uh, Chris Martin and Daniel Wallner.